Time to close up shop. Michael Shane's office. Is he there? Who's calling, please? Henry Allerton. He, he doesn't know me, but, but I've got to talk to him. Well, just one moment, please. Someone named Henry Allerton wants to talk to you. Allerton? Who's he? Hello, hello. Yes, Mr. Allerton. Michael Shane speaking. Mr. Shane, listen. I'm in a tobacco shop at, at Bay and Third, and I... Mr. Allerton. Mr. Allerton. of the guy who shot him? No. I was in the back room packing boxes. He must have heard me coming out and he ran like lightning. What are you doing here? Oh, can't a man buy a pack of cigarettes? This place is closed to tourists, including you. Thank you, sir. Is this where it happened? Now look, Mike, this has been one of those days. Why don't you pack up and go home? You can read all about it over your orange juice tomorrow morning. Oh, I was just trying to be helpful, Will. Looks like uh, he was talking to someone on the phone when he was shot. Yeah, that's the way it looks. Find out who the party was? No, but we're trying. It was me. What? He called me in my office tonight. While he was on the line, he was shot. What did he tell you? Nothing. He didn't have a chance. Is Alton your client? Never heard of him before. He was just a scared voice on the phone, that's all. Well, I'll need a statement. You'll have to come downtown. No, can't we do that tomorrow? Come on. You hear the news? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I heard it on the car radio. Oh, Mike Shane, Lieutenant Wallace. Where'd you lose him? I got him as far as Collins. Then he must have switched taxes. I kept following the first one. You mean you were having Allerton tailed? 24 hours a day. Sorry I lost him. Maybe if I had... Ah, don't worry about it, Lieutenant. This has been a big day for bad luck. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll uh, see you back at headquarters. Mm. Why don't you let me drive you down, Will? We can talk. All right. Take him back. I'll ride in with Shane. Why the tail on Allerton? You don't know who he was, do you? Should I? No, I guess not. He was Mr. Anonymous. Had accountant for the biggest vice syndicate in the state. Now, why didn't you arrest him? The usual reasons, no proof. But tonight he was carrying a list of names with him. Names of every big vice operator in Miami. We wanted that list. How'd you know he had it on him? Tips are very reliable. And don't ask me who he was. Confidential. The list? Where is it? It was supposed to have been in here. Take a look. Alice in Wonderland. That's all we found. No list, no names, no nothing. Like I said, it's been one of those days. That's Joe Moss. Nice conservative businessman. He makes a million dollars a year and his books show 30,000. And Allerton was his accountant. Mm-hmm. And both businesses. The legitimate one and the one I'm after. Well, what about the list? Uh, Moss knew we were bearing down. He told Allerton to transfer the vice records, all the names and addresses, into something less suspicious, something he could carry around with it. Like a kid's book? Maybe. Our informant said that Allerton was going to deliver it to Moss tonight. That's why I had him tailed. And you think the list is somewhere in that book? It's got to be. He searched his home, office, tobacco shop. 
Uh, he was carrying it in that briefcase. And this is all there was in it. Well, maybe the killer grabbed the real list. Oh, there wasn't time. The clerk in the tobacco shop said that the guy bolted right after the shooting. Excuse me. Allerton's daughter and her lawyer just came in. She's quite a little spitfire. I'll have her wait a couple of minutes. Oh, Lieutenant, uh, get the lab on this first thing in the morning. I want him to check it for anything unusual. Right. Well, a couple of months of hard work wasted. I thought we had Moss right where we wanted it. Anything I can do? Yeah. Tell me a joke. I could use a laugh right now. Well, there was, uh, there was this police station thing, and, they, and these two detectives. Now, they go to see the psychiatrist, and the one of them says, See you later, Will. Are you Mr. Gentry? No, but uh, he'll be right out. Well, I wish someone would tell him to hurry up. I have some other things I'd like to do tonight. What's the look for? Nothing, Miss Allerton. I was just thinking, uh, inasmuch as your father just... Ex-father. He's dead. Audrey, please. I'm sorry, Jerry. I guess you just have to get used to me. When was the last time you saw your father alive? About a week ago. I don't live at home, so... Just who are you? Mike Shane. You're not one of Gentry's men. You're a private detective. That's right. Miss Allerton's father called me tonight. You know why? I haven't the slightest idea. And I really don't care. I take it you didn't get along. You're very perceptive, Mr. Shane. Dad didn't get along with anyone, except Joel Moss. They were made for each other. You don't have to answer his questions, Audrey. He has no official standing. Why the smoke screen? Does she have something to hide? No, not a thing. Jerry takes care of my legal affairs. We're going to be engaged soon. Oh, family lawyer and uh, future husband. Very convenient. You're jumping to some pretty big conclusions. Maybe. It, uh, depends on the size of the estate. Salerton, Mr. Lett. You still here? Just leaving, Will. Glad you think I can handle it myself. Goodbye, Miss Allerton. Maybe I'll see you again. Don't count on it. Would you come in, please? hurt your eyes? Just do as you're told. I'll walk across the room and sit by the window. What do I use for radar? So you'll stub your toe. Move. Comfortable? Sure. I enjoy being a target. Anything to make you happy. Now, you just relax, and I'll ask you a few questions. And let's hope you have the right answers. I have one answer right now. What's that? Your name. It's Joel Moss. Was that a lucky guess, Shane? Partly. How did you get in here? Oh, my boy here picks locks. Do you mind? It's better than waiting in the hall. Pretty handy with light switches, too. Why the blackout? Let's say I'm shy. Besides, there are a few things happened tonight I didn't want to get involved in. Like the murder of Henry Allerton? Could be. He called you just before he was shot tonight. What makes you so sure? <laughs> Read it in the paper. Papers aren't out yet. Heard it on the radio. That phone call wasn't public information. Who's your source? It slipped my mind, Shane. Too bad I can't ask Allerton. Yeah. You know, it's a real shame about him. He was a good accountant. Used to find my tax loopholes for me. Saved me a lot of money. Sounds like he was pretty smart. More than that, he was brilliant, but a worrier. Now, you know the kind. Made a lot of money, got himself an ulcer, and wound up eating nothing but sour cream. Tell me, Shane. 
Why did he call you tonight? He didn't say. He had a bullet in him. He was carrying a briefcase with him. What was in it? Sorry to disappoint you, Moss, but I don't know. Why don't you ask Will Gentry? Shane, do you want him to do the questioning? He'll get the same answers when he wakes up. You know, maybe you're telling the truth. Just maybe. Come on, let's go. Aren't you staying for drinks? Oh, some other time. Thanks. Slithy Toves did Geyer and Gimble in the wave. Come again? Just a little jabberwocky, Angel. Takes me back to my youth. Is that what the papers are printing these days? Mm-hmm. Will Gentry and Alice in Wonderland. Oh, were they dating? Yeah, it looks that way. Poor Will. Now, he's been trying for months to get that list, and what does he get? A briefcase with a children's book. Maybe the book's a code. Now, for his sake, I hope it is. Well, in any case, it's no concern of the Shane office. Would you like to join me for lunch? Thought you had a date. I do. I'm having uh, lunch with Dick. Uh, you better count me out. I've got some work to do. I'll have a sandwich sent up. All right. I'll be back in an hour. Oh, uh, don't forget to put the tab on the uh, expense account. Naturally. Drive the car, Miss Hamilton. I'll tell you where to go. Will they be two? Yeah, they're supposed to be, unless she stands me up. No, she shouldn't. Well, if she does, would you like to take her place? Try me on my day off. Well, I just may do that. Shane. Yeah, this is Dick, Mike. Oh, yeah, Dick. Did Lucy leave yet? Yeah, left about 40 minutes ago. Well, she's not here. I'll give her a little longer. Maybe she got held up in traffic. Okay, I'll wait. Okay. Hi, Dick. Hi. Lucy come back with you? No, she never showed. She probably forgot. No, she told me she was meeting you. Probably saw something in a shop window. You know your sister. Probably turned up with a new hat. Well, she's usually on time. Now sit down and relax. Come in. Michael Shane? That's right. My name is Rice. I'd like to talk to you in private. Tell him to take a walk. Oh, wait a minute. What's going to stop me from throwing you out of here? Lucy Hamilton. Hold it, Dick. Maybe you'd better go in the other room. Yeah, but what? Don't argue. All right, Rice. Where is she? You, uh... You got a match. 
I said, where is she? All right, it's enough of that. Right now, she's still breathing. You want to keep her that way? Yeah. That's better. Why don't I use your phone? office. Put her on. There's a friend of yours. Hello, Lucy. Mike, is that you? Are you all right? Yes, but, but I don't know where I am. Did they hurt you? No, I, I was on my way to meet Dick and, and all of it's... My... Lucy! Lucy! Son, you're a good friend of Will Gentry's, right? I hear that uh, you can get in to see him whenever you want. So? So, he's a pretty busy man these days. He's hard to reach. Well, I'm sure he'll find time for a good old friend like you. What are you trying to get at? Gentry's been doing a lot of reading lately. A kid's book or something. Must be a very interesting story. You get it for me. You're out of your mind. He keeps it in his top drawer on a little metal box. It's 2.30 now. I'll meet you at 4 o'clock at the fish net. That's on Collins Avenue. No deal, Rice. It's impossible. Oh, well, you'll find a way. And I wouldn't plan anything with Gentry. You may have to put an ad in the paper looking for a new secretary. This is a small country, Rice. I hope you can find a corner to hide in. <laughs> 4 o'clock, the fish net. And no switches. <laughs> You be there. Dick. Dick. This is important. In exactly 30 minutes, I want you to call Will Gentry. What'll I do, wish him a happy birthday? Just keep him on the phone for a while. I hate to ask an obvious question, Mike, but uh, would you mind explaining why? I haven't got time now. I've got to stop by a bookshop first. A bookshop? What are you going 30 to... minutes, Tim. We'll see you in a minute, Mr. Shane. He's in there talking with Joe Moss and his lawyer. Moss have anything to say? Not much. Men in his business keep their mouths shut. It's a tribal custom. Any luck on the book? Nah. Gentry got it back from the lab this morning. No invisible ink. No coded list of names. Even checked it out for Braille. Hmm. Well, if it isn't Michael Shane. I didn't think you'd recognize me, Moss. In the daylight. What are you doing here? Well, just paying my respects. And you? Oh, I, I was just straightening Gentry out on a couple of things. Like what? Like where I was last night? You know, for some strange reason, he's got the mistaken idea that I'm involved in the Allerton killing. Oh, but you couldn't have been, could you? You were uh, playing cards last night with some friends? <laughs> how, how did you guess? <laughs> well, I have a lot of appointments today. You will excuse me. You're coming, Jerry? Oh, you two know each other. 
Uh, we have a mutual friend. Now look, Shane, I don't like your attitude. Take it easy. I asked you last night who your source was. Now I know. Let's go. Oh, give my regards to Audrey. Hi, Will. Social call? Mm-hmm. I can't give you much time. I'm up to my ears. The, uh, Allerton case? The Allerton mess, you mean? Boss just cut me to little ribbons for invasion of privacy. I'm more interested in that lawyer of his. Jerry Letterman? Yeah. Bright boy, first in his class at law school. He's got everything except ethics. Uh, did you show him the book? Not on your life. That's our race in the hole. Moss would give his best friend's right arm to get a look at that book. Yet, uh, you can't figure it out, huh? Nope. That's the problem. Mind if I take a look at it again? Why, any ideas? Maybe. Well, I wish somebody else had charge of this. I'm beginning to feel like a bank guard. Hello, Gentry. Who? Yeah, put him on. Tim Roy. Yeah. Hey, what is it, Tim? I'm busy. Hmm? No, no comment on last night's uh, shooting. Moss? That's right, we had him in for question. Now, what do you think? Sure, I'd book him, but where do I get the evidence? Uh, Tim, you don't seem to be hearing very well. I said no comment. Tomorrow I'm calling a press conference. Ask your questions then. Yeah, I know all about the Bill of Rights. Now, see you tomorrow. Our friend's getting to be a nuisance. Getting to be. Any help? Uh, no, I uh, I thought the uh, illustrations might be a clue. But, uh, no, we checked that. We checked everything. As a matter of fact, we even took the briefcase apart. Nothing. Here, we're holding the biggest bombshell in this city, and we can't figure it out. Uh, well, I know you've got a lot to do. Uh, look, I'll uh, get in touch with you if I think of anything. Where's Shane? He left. Why? He switched books on me. What? Are you sure? Positive. Look. These pages are still uncut. The lab wouldn't leave it that way. I'll see if he's still in the building. Bates, Gentry, put out a citywide alert. Mike Shane, you heard me the first time. Get him. What's he doing, sightseeing? Don't worry about it. Your meter's running, ain't it? Sure. All right, then just keep driving. The man says drive, so I drive.
any luck? I lost him. He sucked me into a prize trap. Well, what happened? I'd fallen him all over town. He winds up in a warehouse and clobbers me. Well, I don't think he's coming. Maybe he expects a trap. No, something probably happened to make him change his plans. What about Lucy? Like, you're not going to hurt her or anything, are you? Ah, oh, now, take it easy. Did you get the book? Yeah, I got it. The trouble is I had to pull a switch on Gentry. Look, Mike, maybe if we told him... No, we can't afford to take a chance. Look, we're, we're wasting our time around here. If Rice was coming, he'd been here by now. All right, what do we do? You go back to the office. Wait there. I just can't sit around, Mike, and wait. You've got to, Dick. Rice may try to contact us. I'm going visiting. Meet you at the office? No, that's the first place Gentry try to reach me. Leave a message here for me if you need me. Pay the check. Where's Miss Allerton? She's not here. It's funny. I called your office and they said the two of you were at the Allerton home. Who is it, Jerry? Michael Shane, Miss Allerton. I'm here on business. I have no business with you. Maybe not, but I think you'll listen to what I have to say. You have 30 seconds. Your father was carrying valuable information when he was shot. A list of incriminating names and addresses. I know all this. What's the point? There was a book in his briefcase. I have it. <laughs> You're lying. Listen to the radio, Jerry. I took it from police headquarters. Oh, really? Then what's to stop us from calling them and turning you in? Nothing. There's the phone. No takers. I thought so. This book, why are you so sure I'm interested in it? Because in the right hands, it can ruin Joel Moss. And you hate him, don't you? I came here to see if Dad had a duplicate list in his private papers. The police were here first. He hasn't. Yes, I found that out. What's your price for the book, Mr. Shane? Lucy Hamilton. Who? You mean you've never heard of her? No. Who is she? Either you're both lying, or one of you is double-crossing the other. I'm afraid we can't do business. Just a minute. You and I are, are after the same person, Joel Moss. Can't we work together? I don't like the other member of your team. What do you mean? Tell her, Jerry. Oh, I, uh, I was going to let you know eventually. You... Tell me what? Your fiancé is Moss's lawyer. Well, he's exaggerating. Uh, I was doing some tax work, that's all. Uh, believe me, I, I dislike him as much as you do. Get out of here. Well, I'll drop him cold. Now, now that's a promise. I was, I was going to tell you, but... Well, I, I didn't think you'd understand. I said get out! I'll, uh, I'll call you in the morning, all right? Audrey? My father belonged to Joel Moss. He was a piece of property that could add and subtract. When the phone rang, he jumped. Do you know what that did to my mother, Mr. Shane? I can guess. She hated Moss. She begged my father to cut free. He kept promising he would, but he never made it. She was ashamed of him. She was so ashamed of him. Eventually, it killed her. I'm sorry. So was I. But it's not gonna happen to me. Jerry knows how I feel about Moss. He's made his choice. So did your father. 
That's right. And he wound up dead in a phone booth. He was calling for help, Miss Allerton. I'm glad it didn't come. Maybe you arranged it that way. Maybe I did. good friends? Uh-huh. He told me to be sure and say goodbye to you. What about my book? What book is that? He promised he'd bring it for me. Was it about a, a little girl, a little girl named Alice? Uh-huh. And the white rabbit, and the duchess, and the mad hatter. Why, sure. Mr. Allerton promised he'd buy it for me. Well, now, don't you worry about it. You'll get your book. Maybe a little late, but then the, the white rabbit always was late, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bye now. Like that? That was old last year. I want something with a little class. May I help you, sir? I'm looking for Joel Morse. Oh, yes, sir, right over there. Hello, Morse. I want to talk to you privately. Sure. Well, fix your hair, honey. What's the matter with my hair? Calm it. Well, what's on your mind, Shane? Why didn't your boy meet me at the fishnet? My boy? Oh, come on. You got to be a little more specific than that. Rice. Do we know anybody by the name of Rice? Sorry, Shane. Never heard of him. Let's stop fencing. I've got something you want. I'm willing to trade. Why is it everybody's a salesman these days? You know, a fella called me and wanted to sell me something just a few hours ago. Who? Can't remember the name. You know, I got a hunch that he was selling the same thing you are. Are you buying? Nope. I've got that copy of Alice. You certainly went to enough trouble to get it. Now tell me where Lucy is and it's yours. Alice, Lucy, Rice. <laughs> Boy, you're mentioning an awful lot of names I never heard of. Well, start remembering. Remembering what? I want to know where she is. You hired Rice to kidnap my secretary because you wanted to make a deal on that book. Ah, uh, you used your head, Shane. If it was me and if I wanted to make a deal, I'd make it. You understand? I'm not interested in your merchandise, so go peddle it to someone who is. Like the police? Yes, like the police. They ought to be tired of those old comic books by now. Looking for you, why don't you meet us? Don't ask so many questions. Where's the book? Uh, I have it uh, here. <laughs> Bring it up here. The address is 7440 York. You know where that is? I'll find it. Apartment 5. And listen, no friends. Just bring the book. Hey, what about Lucy? <laughs> you worry too much. Get up here. Drink 
or something. I bet you never kept quiet so long in your whole life. Well, don't worry, you'll be out of here pretty soon. talking about it? Well, I don't know very much. Rice forced me here, and, and then they blindfolded me. They? Yes, there was somebody else in the room. I don't even know whether it was a man or a woman. They, they never talked to each other. Did anybody call Rice and tell him not to meet Mike? Yes, he was here alone with me when the phone rang. And I, I heard him say something about canceling a, a four o'clock appointment. Well, that explains why he didn't show. But how come the change in plans? Because of Joel Moss. Our killer called him today and offered him that book. Moss turned him down. Turn him down? Right. And that left our friend in the middle of nowhere. Where after all that planning, the buyer wasn't buying, so he told Rice to break the appointment. Oh, then Rice started getting ideas of his own. He called me and was going to make his own deal with Moss. A nice double cross. But our friend killed him first. He knew Rice was the only one who could identify him. Well, why didn't Moss want the book? That's a good question. I think a little girl named Marianne gave me the answer. All right, now we go to work. Dick, get the book out of the glove compartment of my car. All right, what do I do with it? Take it over to Gentry and fill him in on everything, including that. Yeah, but what about the... Come on, get started. All right. You're going home and straight to bed, and you're taking tomorrow off. Oh, why? I'll be fine. Yeah, but you'll be better after 10 hours sleep. Gun or the window? Which way do you want to go out? Well, the next time you want to search an office, remember to mask your flashlight. I'm, I'm not very experienced at this. What were you looking for, anyway? You said you had the book. I, I thought I might be able to find it. What then? Sell it to the highest bidder? No, I give it to the police. But first, I'd let Moss know I had it. I'd make him crawl a little. Where have you been since I left you? Driving around, then I went to my apartment. Did you hear from Jerry Latimer? Yes, he called me about an hour ago. He said he was breaking with Moss. You believe him? I don't know. If he does, I'll let him have another chance. Mr. Shane, if you give me that book, I might be able to help you with my father's murder. The police have it by now. But if you have any information, you better give it to me. It's not very much. My father called me two days ago. He said he was frightened that someone was following him. Did he mention any names? No. But he asked to see me. 
I think he wanted to stay with me at the apartment until things cooled off. He said he had had enough, that he was getting out. Anything else? Yes. He said he was delivering the list to Joel Moss. What did you do? I hung up on him. Do you blame me? How many times did he promise me he was through? Gentry knew what your father was doing. Someone tipped him off. It was you, wasn't it? It was wrong, I guess. But I wanted to get Moss in trouble and teach my dad a lesson. The only one who learned a lesson was me. Why don't you forget about all this? Go on home. We'll all be over in a few hours anyway. I don't know whether to thank you or not. Don't worry about me. You just grow up a little. Where's Lucy now? Mike took her home. All right, fine. Somebody had him over a barrel, but why the blazes didn't he tell me about it? Because he was ordered not to call in the police. What did you want him to do, take a chance with Lucy's life? There are law enforcement bodies in this state, and they do a pretty competent job. Mike has a license, not a badge. And he won't have the license long. Well, what else could he do? Rice gave him a deadline. He didn't have time to think. The fact remains, he stole police evidence. All right, this isn't your problem. You can go. Mike. How's the temperature in there? Below zero. You want me to hang around? No, thanks. You can go on home. Hello, Will. I ought to throw you in jail. What bothers you most? A broken law or a bruised ego? Law. We don't know the meaning of the word. There happens to be a distinction between private and public justice. You know, the circumstances. What would you have done? We're not getting anywhere. He should be booked. Before you do that, I have a few things to say. My private justice turned up a few facts. About what? About this. It's worthless. Worthless? Keep talking. When I showed it to Moss, he laughed in my face. And do you know why? Because it doesn't contain the list. Then why was Allerton carrying it around with him? He bought it for a little girl, his next door neighbor. The book was the only thing he had with him. The only other thing, you mean. He knew he was being followed, so he ditched the real list. The only place he could have done that was a tobacco shop, and we searched that from top to bottom. Then there's something you missed. Look, the shop will be closing soon. We'd better get down there. Someone else may get the same idea and start searching the place before we do. Yeah, well, you're going to stay right here. All right, find it yourself. All right, come on. We'll go buy some cigarettes.
Is it a pleasure to put you under arrest, Moss? Big deal, Gentry. So you got me for breaking and entering. Do I get a jury trial? There'll be a few more charges by then. And what are you going to use for proof? Allerton's list will be a good start. We're going into the tobacco shop and pick it up. Call in for a car to take him in. Come on. All right, now let's go back over what happened. There were two things in Allerton's briefcase. The copy of Alice in Wonderland and the list of names. Now we know all that. He probably realized he was being followed, ducked in here, and got rid of the list. The question is where? Where did you find him? Phone booth. Oh, this is a great time to look up a phone number. Or a list of names. You mean the book? Exactly. Names and addresses. The key ones checked in ink. How'd you know? Something seemed odd to me last night after the shooting. Today I realized what it was. There were two phone directories on this ledge. Both of them covered the same territory, but one of them was new. Well, that wraps it up. Most must have figured the list was still here, waited till the shop was closed, and came down with one of his boys. You're forgetting something. What? The man who kidnapped Lucy and who committed two murders. Must have been Moss. Moss wouldn't kidnap Lucy. He knew the kid's book was worthless. Then who? Allerton's daughter told me he was being followed. Someone was putting the pressure on him. Sure, my man Wallace. Exactly. You realize what you're saying? I'm saying Wallace is our boy. That's a rotten lie. You better have proof you're talking about a policeman. That's right. The one out of a thousand who goes bad. You better be joking, Shane. I'm not. You thought that book was worth a fortune, but you couldn't steal it yourself. Gentry would have known it was someone in his department. So you decided to use me, through Lucy. Why would I do that? The usual reason, money. Rice told me the book was in that metal box in your drawer. Who else knew that? You saw me put it in there last night. You can't prove a thing. Joel Moss can. You called him today and offered him that book. He'll be very happy to identify your voice. All right, stay right where you are. I wouldn't try it, Wallace. There are two of us. The odds are against you. All right, just stay out of my way. Come on. I will. You don't want to forget this. You like it? Beautiful. Is that a peace offering for Will Gentry? <laughs> Hardly. Now, he let me off with a lecture. This happens to be for a very special little friend of mine. Oh, who's that? A little girl named Mary Ann. Uh, have we got a card that I can put with this? Yeah. However, I'll fill it out. Your handwriting is atrocious. <laughs> to Mary Ann. Who shall I say it's from? Uh, just sign it. The White Rabbit. She'll know. <laughs> Here are some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane mystery. Mike Shane? That's right. Uh, my name is Gino Cavelli. Hey, do you mind if I come in? I have office hours for business, Mr. Cavelli. Well, this kind of business don't go by the clock. Sometimes it blows up right in your face. I gotta go downtown, but I come back in about an hour, huh? Who's he? Mike Shane. Shane, the detective? What's he doing here? Joan thought you might need some help. Look, I need the help, I ask for it. Charlie, he's in there! It's too late, he's already dead. There must be at least 50 people who'd like to see Stefano dead for one reason or another. Including his wife? Maybe. She's in her 20s, he's 55.